Like, it's all in your head. Nothing you're doing here benefits your teammates. Everyone hates playing with you right now. It doesn't matter. This is how League of Legends work. You are just griefing everyone. You have to kill Darius, you are griefing your team. You don't want to win. We're just not playing the real game. This E is just bad, right? The way you're playing is just bad. You're yeah. playing for trades, your bell just showed top, you lost your fucking flash. Yo, what up guys, it's Soul. Today we have a special video for you guys. Today I'm going to be getting coached by the one, the only, Vayar V2, who is a challenger player in like three roles, jungle, mid, and support. And he's also a positional coach for Cloud9. Um, in the video, we talk about a lot of interesting concepts as far as how to think about the game, how to play ASO, how to scale. And quite honestly, it's like one of the most, uh, I learned a lot. Let's just say that. I really do actually recommend watching the whole thing um, if you want to get the most out of it as possible. And, but feel free to skip around though. It is a long video. So thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. I really do appreciate it and hope you enjoy and hope you guys learn a lot. I actually have bullet points that I wrote down about like uh, me like as a player mm -hmm. and what I want to do and what I want from the session. Do you want me to read them? Sure. Okay. Um, about me, I'm a master 250 LP peak player. This was last season. I was a ASO OTP before the rework, but now I'm struggling yeah. to climb out of D1. Um, I want to use ASO and Oriana to climb. So if ASO is banned, I play Ori. Um, and I want to get Challenger to further my credibility as a content creator. Yeah. Um, what I want from the session is teach me how I should think throughout the game as far as how should I think about playing a lane, where should I be on the map at all stages of the game, um, clear understanding of how to climb the challenger from the point that I am now, um, fix any misconceptions that I have about the game. Um, I'm also aware that one session will not instantly turn me into a challenger player, but I would like to try to get as much out of the session as possible. Um, I don't like sugarcoating, so like, don't be afraid to hurt my feelings. I prefer straight to the point. Yeah, I never am. So. Yeah, I yeah, I've watched your Patreon. So. I'm of the I'm of the opinion that <laughs> if you go and get coaching, and then you are gonna be upset that you get told that you're trolling, it's yeah. well, why are you getting completely agree. coaching right? Um, I mean, like being an asshole one trick before, uh, sadly, does not help you that much with the new asshole, because in my opinion, the champion is completely different. Mm -hmm. Um. Old ASOL was really, really strong in lane and all-ins and skirmishes and had very, like, uh, a very strict way of playing the game that uh, old ASOL you had to base for, like, Dark Seal, skill your fucking E, run it down the lane and fucking, you know, cheat a recall with your C pot into Dark Seal every game and just roam. Yeah. Um, and you just play like that with fucking Rylize and just run around and roam the whole fucking map, right? Yeah. And... That's how you're gonna win. You would fucking just push your lane with your W. If enemy contests, you just ignite them and push them out and go and roam, 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 roam and try to win the game through mid game. Obviously, he didn't scale like terribly, but it's not like he was this late game beast. Um, whereas now, he's completely useless in lane. And for the most part, um, a lot of champions counter him now because you're so animation locked. Like when you're queuing, you just can't move. So, yeah. Yeah. so many champions get to hit their abilities. Um, so it, it's a very different mindset and yeah. you just have to trust that yes, your champion does become strong. Like Aesol is really strong later. Mm -hmm. He's just also really useless early, right? Yeah. So we are going to talk quite a lot about how to try to make the game stable to actually get to the point where you can be a champion. And then also notice that you do somehow, right? I don't know why because I haven't watched you play yet, but... You do somehow, even though you are at the stage that you are meant to carry the game, you still do not carry. Yeah. So that usually happens because you either you fuck up once in mid game or late game, like you miss position, or you fuck up a rotation, or maybe you don't even snowball hard enough. I I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you don't utilize the mistakes that enemy presents. I'm not sure. Um. Because when people play scaling champions, it's usually two ways that they lose the game. They either lose because they are too bad to scale early, like their laning phase is poor, they die to ganks, they uh, don't deny enemy any roam timers or something like that, and then the game just always falls apart before you can scale. Or you consistently scale, which you seem to do for the most part. Um, right, Most of the time you do get to the point, sometimes you have games like this. Um, but most of the time you get to the point, but you still don't carry. And obviously we will never be 100% win rate, but 
you do lose a lot of games, even help. though you is get to the, the stage right where your champion is meant do to I be care? strong, right? Love you. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, also, like this, this is... we can never have happened. Yeah. Like this is just so bad because this and this, your champion just simply cannot function. Yeah. So the game that we're going to watch, which is the Salos one, this doesn't end up happening, I assume, because your score. Uh, yeah. But that's like homework for you is to try to figure out why do I end up zero free and just chain inting some games. Um, again, I understand you can't win every game, but this happened here and it happened here. Happened within four hours or something of each other, and yeah. it's just it can't happen that often. Like they have Pantheon, it's really clear how they want to play this game, right? Pantheon wants to kill you, yeah, yeah, and he wants to shut you down. Okay. So, yes, he has wave control, I understand. But the thing is, you're playing D1. Yeah. And when challenger players don't manage their waves correctly, I don't think Pantheon is either. I refuse to believe that this Pantheon crashed, like, second wave willingly and forced you to overextend the fourth wave. No, and I, then I got you. solo killed that lane. Right. Yeah, but, I mean, even if you get solo killed, like, my whole point is he can force you to die if he's good. Because he can just bully you hard level 1 to 2, crash wave, and force the bounce. And then you are forced to stand like on overextended part of the lane, right? Like if this is mid lane, and then here's tier 1 turret, yeah? Yeah. And here's enemy tier 1. Wave 1 starts in middle. Yeah. And you can't walk up because he'll just spare you to death. Yeah. So since you don't walk up, eventually he will push you in. Let's say he crashed second or third wave. Wave will bounce, yeah? My whole point is, when you are in a losing matchup, enemy can always force you to be here at, like, 4th wave. I just think these players are too bad to do it. You know? So, so the problem I don't I understand have, how do uh, how do you die yeah. when they don't even force the wave to be here. Yeah, I mean, like, my problem is, like, when I'm playing range versus melee, I think, I like my head, like, I, like, I should get prior and like crash on three and then let it bounce. yeah but your champ is just headshotted yeah but like how am i supposed to that. how do i stack like without shoving well oh, how do you stack if you're inting the whole game <laughs> true yeah right so, like, do, do like seriously like yeah <clears throat> yeah you, you just don't e i understand in in a fucking perfect world right in a perfect world a soul hits every single creep level one right you auto every melee you auto the casters and you press e yeah, and then shoving the... But the thing is, right, the thing is... League of Legends has a couple of rules, right? It has a couple of rules. So I'm gonna go to this game, and I'm gonna just pause when we are at the start of delay. Okay. So, enemy laner is right now AFK, yeah? Okay, so laning phase has a couple of rules. If I use a spell, no matter how I use it, if I use a spell, I am weaker. Right? Because cooldown, yeah? Yeah. So if, let's say, enemy is here, and I cast my spell on them, and they dodge it, now I am weaker. Yeah. Same logic if I use my spell on wave. So that's why champions like Asol, and Vagar and Vladimir, for example can be not so good in lane, because they are often forced to use spells on creeps. Right? Vladimir often has to Q creeps to heal, Vega often has to Q for stacks, and Azel often has to use spells for stacks. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. So, okay, if enemy laner knows this, that first of all your champion lacks damage, right? Your only real damage on this champion is Qing while Wing, no? Yeah. So, you first of all lack damage, so that already makes you weaker. But second of all, you're also going to be on cooldown if you're using spells. And you are forcing yourself to have to fight enemy laner when you are hitting creeps and pushing, yeah? Yeah. So when you're doing this against a Pantheon, how, how, how can you expect that to be allowed? It's not. Right, it's not. So then you're just ending up to, like, just die. And you're also going to end up having to play here as a champion with no mobility. Your W is not a real mobility spell. So it's just unplayable. So it doesn't matter. Like, if you play 
quote unquote safe, right? Because I, I played like ten games of New Asol. You will only lose like three to four Stardust, no? Yeah. Like it's not like it's unplayable. You will lose legit three to four Stardust. If you're in a hard matchup and you just like stand here, and you let enemy push you in, you're not gonna lose more than three to four Stardust. Because you're still going to get to E. You're still going to get to E all the free melees. Yeah. You know how when both of you don't hit any creeps, the melees meet and they're all free low, right? Yeah. Then you can just E and only hit the melees, no? Yeah, so I should be prioritizing uh, controlling the You should the have wave. the game be stable. You should not get Stardust. Yeah. If you're inting to get Stardust, you are just trolling. Like, you just have to make sure, like, your champion needs gold and EXP just like every other champion. So if you are inting for Stardust, and you end up with 6 CS per minute and 2 deaths, that is way worse uh, for the game than having 10 Stardust less at 15 minutes. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's why it's, like, so, like, when, when Riot does this to champions, like, people just... They forget the fundamentals of laning, and they're just like, oh my god, I have to use spell, I have to use spell, I have to use spell. No, you don't. Right? Like, I watch people play Vagar, and they have a slow push, and then they just don't slow push, because they're like, oh my god, I can get double Q stack here. Yeah. And then they ruin their whole wave, and now they get frozen on, and they die. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, like, you're playing Ace over the Pathfinder, the guy's not just gonna let you hit him. Every auto you do, he's gonna Q you. And he has strong all-in, and if Pantheon has a long lane, if you stand here, you're just gonna get ganked and die, yeah? Yeah. So, can't play like that. So, in the solo queue environment, if I'm continuing pro versus Pantheon, which I should, this will mean that he will have uh, the prio, and then he can get roam opportunities on the map, so... Yeah, uh, that's, that's just I, the game. It. It's just just how the game works. So because if, if he I get can point that in solo queue, yeah, it it's not my matter. fault. It's not my fault. I mute all. Doesn't matter. Okay. This you will get flamed if you are one and six inting. Will you not? Yeah. So what changes? Do you not trust yourself to carry? Guess not. The way I see it is sure. I I can sit and press my E on the wave. But I will lose lane, because Panfin will simply just kill me, yeah. right? And I will get ganked. And also, I have a target on my back when I pick ASOL, because everyone on enemy team is like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, ASOL will scale, right? Yeah. So they will camp you. Yep. So I have a target on my back, and I need to scale, and I need to get strong, and I'm just, like, just pushing versus Rek'Sai LeBlanc, or something like this. I will just int. I will just die. Yeah. And that's just not a good way of playing the game. Because what will end up happening is, first of all, you're saying that you have no trust in your teammates. Because you're basically saying, okay, I would rather just die than to trust my teammates to live a gank. Yeah. Okay, so now I die, and I lose gold and EXP, and I lose Stardust because I'm dead. And enemy gets stronger. What stops Pantheon from doing that roam that you killed yourself for to stop, what stops him from doing that later? Because now he's even stronger, right? Yeah. If you fall behind, you don't even scale. At least if the game is, like, even, right? Can't you 1v1 the Panfin at some point once you have, like, Catalyst and stuff? I mean, that 1v1 is really hard, but... I well, mean, not 1v1 lead. as in you fist fight him, but, like, you can play. It gets easier with time, right? Yeah. But if you just fucking suicide push at level 3 and 4 and just die, lose your flash, now you can never play. Yeah. Like, I understand where you're coming from. I was a fucking Vagar one trick for three seasons straight when I started playing the game. So I completely understand. Yes, you let the enemy fucking push, they get one roam off and all of a sudden it's mid diff. Yeah. But it's even more of a mid diff when you're pushing versus Orianna getting poked down by Aerie Scorch and you can't fucking breathe, and then Jarvan flashes on you, and you die, and now you're inting the whole game. So are you a firm believer that you can maintain a high win rate on this champion in solo queue? Well, of course, look, Nemesis. Yeah. 
you just have to allow the champion to do its job. You're trying to play him as if you are like Victor with airy bomb plating. You are not. Yeah. Like what you are trying to achieve is why a seer was pick banned in pro play. You just push and you can't get ganked. Because a seer will W E Q away. I'm sure Azol can push some matchups. I'm just saying pushing versus a Pantheon. Yeah. With no vision, nothing, just brain deadly pushing because you don't want to be the roam is just terrible mindset and it's not a healthy way to play the game because you're literally just saying i don't trust my teammates and i would rather fall behind so my teammates don't die it's just unplayable you can't play the video game if that is your mindset because that literally means you can't even farm side waves in late game because if let's say i'm in mid game and i see oh my god there's free waves top i want to go top I can't go top, because with your mindset, your bot lane will int, or somebody will int. Yep. So then, okay, then, then I just don't get farmed in either. You have to 1v9 in the game, you're playing fucking ace-hole. You're not playing karma, you don't need a teammate. The only thing you need as ace-hole is the game to be stable while you're farming, so that once you're like 2-3 to three items, you can actually win. And I feel like you are... A bit mentally out of it versus champions and team comps like this where they have kindred tf and they need to like end the game and you often just end up like inting and like i said you can't win every game yeah but what you can do is you can have good conditions for yourself every game so that you have a chance to carry every game but i feel like you don't like this mindset you have is really good for lisandra it's the same mindset I have as Lissandra. As Lissandra, I don't mind suicide pushing every wave and playing aggressive. Because I have E, I usually have very defensive runes, right? Yeah. And I want to play like that. I want to fight mid-early. I want to have the opportunity to push and roam. As ASOL level 3, I don't see why I would want to do that if I am vulnerable to getting ganked and die. Obviously, if I have a free matchup, I should do it because, yes, I do get a bit more Stardust playing that way. I'm just saying playing like that versus like a Pantheon, you're playing into what he wants, right? Yeah. Which is uh, just It just terrible. feels flippy when you're playing ASO and like your mindset, like at that, I mean, you would, you would argue to that, that I think it's flippy early, just conceding prior and, and trying not to die and hoping, like, I don't really like that word, that the, the game state is... Is stable so that you can 1v9. Okay, but look. Let's see if you have a game here. I want to. Do you remember a game in this world that went to complete shit? Because uh, um... it's more important. To get you in the right mindset than to actually watch that Silas world. Okay, lovely. Here you have no flash and you died. Let's see what the fuck happened here. Because <laughs> they have Silas Lee Sin. And Silas can set up gank. Also, your minimap is way too big. Way too big. Having a big minimap does not help your map awareness. Because no matter how big this is, you're still gonna have to tell yourself to look here, right? Yeah. It's not big enough. To the point where, because your eyes will be focused on this most of the time, right? Yeah. And then you have to move your focus to here. So it doesn't matter how big it is. The problem when it's this fucking big is that first of all, these icons get bigger, which hurts your like vision, right? Yeah. You see less things. This is bigger, which means you literally can't even see this right here, right? Like over this wall. You just get flanked easier. It's just bad. I'm not saying have the minimap the smallest, because that's bad too, because then the icons just start stacking on top of each other. Just have it like half of what it is right now, you know? Okay. And sure, it'll feel like shit the first couple of games, but that's always how it is. Like, everything you change about yourself, that's like a habit. It'll always feel bad the like first times. But, yeah. Like, the Silas matchup, Silas' strength as a mid laner is that he's really good in, like, banger skirmishes and fights, and he has really good gank setup. So every time we push a Silas in, um, 1v1 wise, it might not always be bad. Because he doesn't have an easy time to all in. 
and his runes are really weak, like this guy. He should never get to proc first strike. The only problem is if I push an, uh, Silas in, I can get ganked. So if I'm in the mindset here that, oh, I'm going to play really aggressive versus this Silas because his runes are shit and I feel like I can actually fight him, then okay, but then I need a side to ward, right? And like actually hug. So this is perfect example. So I was saying, if you are in a matchup that you have to play safe, these free melees that you just eat, they will be super low and your crease will be super low, right? Again, the wave will meet here. Nobody of the mids hit the wave. Let's say I'm playing Aesol versus Ori, right? If you are playing the way you're doing right now versus Oriana, do you not lose half of your HP level one? Yeah. So versus Ori, if I was you, I would be like here, and I would just only E the melees as soon as they're about to die. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that something with Victor? Yeah, like anything that's gonna like fight me to the death. Right? So Zoe, Victor, Ori, you know? Yeah. Because here, you're only gonna get starters from these three creeps. You didn't get to E the whole way. Yeah. So there's no problem in playing safe. Good. Because this is the thing about Siles, like it's hard for him to all in you when you use creeps. It's just very easy um, for him to set up gank. Yeah. So for example here, right? If you crash his wave, you can just set up wards wherever you want, and now you have the option to let it bounce. So when we ward this raptor, what does this mean? Um, jungle is pathing bot side. Yeah, he could be. Yeah, or he, he could. He could also just off on red buff and just run past raptors and just go on blue rump. Yeah. But yeah. most of the time. People will want to do raptors. So most of the time, this means that he is puffing down. Okay? That's not 100% though. You can't... It, it, it is yeah. not 100%. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Because like I said, he can do 1, 2, 3. That's a very common thing to do. Or he can do, like, raptor start, and then do 2, and then do 3. Or, you know, he can do red into raptors. Like, so, my problem with this raptor ward is, like, if I feel like I'm ungankable, right, I don't mind doing this, but again, right now, this doesn't tell me anything, because I want to have a side that I can hug, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Especially as A soul, no? With your W later, mm -hmm. using wall, right? Yeah. So I'm now saying I'm going to hug both sides, especially if you look at Echo's pathing too. Right? He's gonna eventually end up bot side. He did this, 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 so he probably will gank top, and then he will end up bot side. He's not going to go into enemy top side, because he loses to Lee Sin 1v1, um, one one. and also we assume now with your ward that Lee Sin is starting top side, right? Yeah. Maybe you also saw uh, somebody leash, which, which as you can see here, Seri is in lane. And as you can see, enemy top is not. But then we just know 100% unless he's just... Right, so now, late. if we add the Raptor Ward logic and the Urgot being late logic, then it adds up, right? Yeah. That enemy started topside. And I need to, every game, I need to think about that. Where so enemy started. Is there any uh, other ward besides that Raptor when I'm playing for the bounce? Yeah. There, there, there's a lot. Like, the... Raptor Ward here yeah. is the easiest because you don't have to leave your lane. Yeah. Okay? Leaving your lane obviously means you lose pressure, right? You lose damage. If I leave my lane, I don't get to poke with my spells or my autos, right? And when I crash a wave, often I want to poke them, right? Yeah. That's why you see people often ward raptors because people simply don't want to leave their lane. They don't war they don't ward raptors because it's an actual like good ward. There's way better wards than a raptor ward. This ward here, for example, 
shows you one small raptor and shows you this. Yeah, that's good. That would give you a lot of vision. That forces enemy jungle to run here or flash this wall or jump this wall to gank you. People simply just ward raptor because people want to stand in lane and just keep harassing. In this scenario, in this state where I go for the raptor ward, do you think the other ward was more? Yeah, I think you can't do anything to him in the turret. Yeah. So I think you should just do this so you can actually have vision. You know? Yeah. I think there are three wards that are good. One, two, and three. So this one is just good because you don't have to leave your lane. Yeah. This one is very good because it shows raptors and um, this. But it's the hardest one to achieve because it's the deepest. Right? Takes the most time. And this one is pretty good for you. You know? Covers here, covers here. Yeah. Wars like this is like basically always useless. You know? It doesn't like give you anything to play towards, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, we crash second wave without having any actual vision set up. Here also just trolling. Because this is about breaking the rules of the game. This is exactly what I told you. When we use a spell, we're useless, and we're also useless because we're ASOL. Right? I said that at the start. Like The first thing I said is, you have two things that makes your champion suck. One, I have to use spells, so I'm forced to fight for Stardust. But two, I'm useless. <laughs> yeah. Right? I have to fight, but I'm weak. So you can't just do this at somebody that can all in. You can't just expect to get here to just cast your E, which is one of your spells, you dealt 13 damage, yeah, that's true. and then channel your Q that makes you stop moving and just uh, make him be okay with it. <laughs> right? I just let it bounce, yeah. Yeah, just fucking chill. Bro, you just, you, you crash his wave, you can cast a fucking E at him, for one Stardust if you want, and then just run away, and then drop wards, and then chill on the bounce. Yeah. You are literally going to be fine now for like two plus minutes. Like literally. The wave will end up here, pushing into you, you might have to drop one melee, but you will get the EXP, and the wave will end up here, you'll get a fat fucking E, right? Yeah. You'll get an E covering two waves. You can... Fight Silas here, once you get your wave, you can fight him, you don't have to just let him crash for free, you only have to let him do whatever he wants here, because here you get run down, you know? I, I don't think but, I play the other Silas game like this though, I think this was true. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. When I play a solo queue game, I can't just say, oh, this game play like shit, sure, but the other one play good, okay, but then I'm zero LP gained. Yeah. Right? I need to play good both games. And... We will get into the other Silas game as well, but it could also just be in the case that that guy was just fucking bad and didn't punish. Or maybe it was a different situation, maybe I didn't crash second wave. Yeah. The whole point is, versus Silas, I, I told you the first wave, it's not so easy for him to all in you, because you can use creeps if you play good. But now, you're going against that, you have no creeps to block his E. And you just lock yourself in animation and spit on him, hoping he will just not play the game. Which is just not how the game works. If you are using your spells, regardless how you use them, enemy will punish. If you are walking up on wave 1, pressing E on the whole fucking wave, I hope enemy mage is fucking auto-attacking you, right? Yeah. If you are walking up to enemy bruiser that probably will always have a dash and engage tool, you can't just expect them to be okay with it. Fizz will backflip onto his pole here and one-shot you, Sed will one-shot you here, Echo will one-shot you, Katarina will one-shot you, every champion will fight you back here. You can only do shit like this when you're truly the king of mid lane versus completely useless champions like maybe like Malsahar and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Versus something like a Kassadin you could probably do this, Kale you could probably do this, but these are not real champions. This is just fucked up. Because it doesn't matter if you dodge his E, bro. You lose your fucking flash here when you don't dodge his E. Yeah. And your complete lane is just completely fucked up already. You know? 
This is not even good for Guru, by the way, because he now gets level 3 before you, and you still can't fight him. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. And he has also D shield, and again, this guy has terrible runes. He has first strike precision, he has no resolve, nothing. Usually, this guy will have Doran shield and resolve. So he has second wind Doran shield. And now he will get level 3 before you as well. And now he's going to get E back up, and you can't walk up. And now he slow pushes on you, and you can't farm. See? Yeah. If you walk up here and you try to flip it, if he E's, you're going to have to flash the E. Yeah. So now I am no potions, 10 HP, no flash. What did I achieve? Nothing. Let's, let's use your mindset against here. So you say, oh, I want to play like this so they don't roam. Why can't this guy roam? He can just one-shot this wave and roam right now, no? Yeah. If Lee Sin right here decides to go into your Echo's bot side, what are you going to do about it? Base TP. <laughs> yeah, but you're not going because there's two waves under your turret. Yeah. So you're not doing shit. That's my point. You can't go against what your champion is designed to do. Your champion would be the most OP champion in the game if you can fucking play like this and also be a lucky monster. You can't play like this. Yeah. They can dive you now too, by the way. If they really want. Silas can just slow push this one, crash the next one, and they can just dive you. You're not helping your team. You're not doing anything. If Echo goes mid, you guys lose 2v2. Yeah. Because you could say, oh, I'm making mid lane volatile and that's good for my jungle. But it really isn't. It's only good if Lee doesn't gank. You can't do anything here to set up this gank. If you walk up, you just kill yourself. And if Lee Sin comes, again, you lose 2v2. Because you don't do anything, you know? So here, Lee Sin is fighting blue, and you are completely useless. And you have no flash, so then later on, when you might actually have to play aggressive, because I agree with your logic that, yes, if I play aggressive, I'm gonna get ganked and they're not focusing my teammates. Sure, I agree. I just think it's a terrible mindset to have perma. I think there are timers where that's good. For example, let's say your Echo is diving in my bot lane, and you look bot lane, and you see this is a really good dive. And you tell yourself, enemy jungle is fucking bad if he is mid right now, right? Yeah. And you have flash up, so worst case you lose flash. Then I think it's fine to play aggressive, and you will only lose your flash if enemy jungle comes. Because if enemy jungle comes and ganks mid instead, then your teammates get to dive. Yeah. But you're just forcing this playstyle, regardless what your teammates are doing, regardless of the champions in the game, and that's just bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like, when you're playing top lane and you're fucking split pushing, right, in tw at 25 minutes, and you tell yourself when you're bot lane, hmm, if they gank me here, I do see my teammates are ready to do Nasher. And then you play aggressive, and sure, you die, but you get Nash. That's not too bad. Yep. None of this has anything to do with what you're doing. You're just griefing everyone. Yeah. And if I go in, I'm just flashless, 300 HP, and I'm just dead. And if anything, because you have no trust in your teammates, you are the one making the game this volatile. Echo thought he could kill Silas. You don't even want him to think he can kill Silas. Right? If I could control my Echo, I would want him to just fucking full clear. Yeah. Because if he ganks me, then Lee Sin comes. It's just GG. We just lose the game already. So the game is now completely blown up. And it's hard for you to recover because, again, you are flashless right now. You are forced to overextend. This is my point about how I view the game. You are forced to go over here eventually. Yeah? Yeah. 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 And you're going to have to stand here with no flash as Azol. Yeah. And Silas can then simply just E on you and they can gank you. If enemy support is good player, he can just run mid to then. You see, this guy TP'd really late. The Silas. 
He could already have TP'd. And then he can come back right now. You have no fucking E. You have no spells. So why can't he now just be here and fucking just all in you? No reason for him not to. The only way he can't all in you is if you click back. But if you click back, he pulls the wave up. And that's my whole point. And sure, we can say that in this specific game, Lee Sin just respawns so he can't be mid. Okay, but you didn't kill yourself here on purpose, knowing that Lee Sin will then die later and you can crash. Yeah. Right? And again here, we're just burger flipping that I dodge E. If I didn't dodge E, I'm 1v1 dove. Don't you think? Like, watch here. Look. Who is this way pushing to? Me. Okay, watch how you play. Look his posture. Yeah. Why do you click forward I when he postures like that? I'm greeting for stacks when slow pushing. Right, but if I die now or get low, I will lose more stacks. Yeah, I'm not looking at the big picture. Yes. Like, this is the thing, like, this slow push, whether you're asshole or not, so whether you have stacks or not, it doesn't matter. This is how League of Legends work. Yeah. If a guy is slow pushing on you, and he can all in you, and he is showing you he knows he can all in you, you have to drop CS. It doesn't matter if you lose Stardust. You have to drop CS. If I have to drop one melee here to collect three waves later... That's okay. Yeah. If I can't contest him at all until the wave gets here, that's okay, because then at the bounce, I can probably play. Yeah. If I can't play on the bounce because I have no flash, well, then that's exactly why I shouldn't have fucking inted here, right? You know? Like yeah. at the start? Yeah. Like, let's say this Silas is a fucking fist. If you're bouncing into a fist with no flash, yeah, that's fucked up. But how the fuck did you lose flash versus fist pre-6? Because you're fucked up. So assuming I let this wave slow push and I have a stacked wave under my tower, do I just instantly clear it so the wave goes to neutral? Or Best I... for you is to last it only so you have a slow push. He can't contest your slow push just like you can't contest his. When wave is here, he can't play the game either. And that's when you get a timer. That's how the game will usually work. He gets a timer now, you get a timer after. Yeah. Your champion isn't that bad that he gets a timer now, and then now, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. He is a melee champion. So when Wave is here, and you're slow pushing into him, he can't just walk up and push. You know? Yeah, what about like Ori Victor? Yeah, well, they hard counter Azel. So, I just... so they, they can, yeah. So I just perma concede prior and then play for stacks and hope the game well, is stable? Well, de depends, right? How they play. Like, if the fucking Oriana is just fucking QWing the wave, right? I'm sure you can fight back. Yeah. But generally speaking, versus melee champions, you should be able to build your own slow push and do something. But here you're just fucked up because you walk up, even though he's showing you and you click forward, and you do this again, like I said at the start, the first thing I said, because I knew this was going to happen, this always happens when people play champs like this. You press spell on him, hoping that for whatever reason he clicks back, he is not dog shit, so he doesn't click back. And he simply dashes on you, and you are fucked again. Yeah. You are lucky that you dodge E, because you're unironically solo killed. Like, unironically, if he hit E, and you he lands double part Q, this is your HP. And then he will just dive you in return. And then you once again force your Echo to stop farming and playing for himself. You force him to have to gank mid and save you. Which again, then you are relying on Lee Sin and enemy support to be AFK and not help. Yeah. Which is just bad. Like, it's all in your head. Nothing you're doing here benefits your teammates. Everyone hates playing with you right now. Yeah. And you realize here that you're going to get dove, which is good. It's good that you realize. But this is the whole point. I'm saying that you shouldn't mind losing that one melee. Because now you're losing more. Yeah. You have you have a very good tactic here by not looking at midway to see what you're losing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> good coping mechanism. Yep. But it happens a lot. But you are losing a lot more right now than if you were to give that one creep. So 
I'm ready now to go to the actual VOD that you wanted to watch. Okay. I just had to get this out of my system because this is like too fucked up. You can't play the game this way. Yeah. You have to have some trust in your teammates. And honestly, most of the time when your bot lane dies to enemy mid, it is not even bad for the game because you get a push out, you might get a plate, you get your own roam timer. Yeah. It's really not bad, no? Yep. Like it's it's really rare that enemy mid roams the bot gets a kill and it's just like not good in any way for you guys because usually what happens is your bot lane kills enemy bot lane 2v2 and then they die to panfin or whatever yeah and then you get a push out on a free base sure panfin got a kill but panfin got a kill while losing a whole wave of golden exp and giving you a recall so it's it's not that disastrous yeah. and again if you're jungle is diving and getting something big then like i said yeah i'm fine with you losing flash on purpose you know if it means you stop enemy from countering the dive you know yeah but that's not what you're doing you are just emotionally fighting and yeah. tunneling on stacks hoping that they will not retaliate and punish you Wait, is that the same guy? No, no. Really? It's, it's not. Oh, yeah. Hit? Yeah. Yeah, so this guy's gonna be a lot stronger. Like, Conquer and Second Wind is so much stronger than First Strike Precision. Okay. And these guys had Nunu, no? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> this one's gonna be a lot harder um, than the Lee Sin one, because Nunu and Nunu is one of those champs that, if you get chain ganked by him, you're not helping anyone again. Like, like some champs like Fiddle, right? Like, if you're against Fiddle or Carfus, stuff like that, you can play your lane assuming you're not really gonna get ganked, right? Yeah. But Nunu is ha happy that you're pushing. Nunu just wants to gank, 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 gank. Yeah. And Nunu ganks super fast, so he doesn't get, like, hurt by chain ganking. And Nunu also likes to just stand here on top of Scuttle Crab with the movement speed and then have two options. What I mean by that is he likes seeing you here, so that's his first option, and then he likes seeing your bot lane here, so that's his second option. And then he just uses crab movement speed and just double use to one lane. So when you start your lane like this, and you first of all you, you don't ward a side at the start or anything, and you still want to push like this. Right, you're already pushing, and again, your champion by default, your champion by default pushes a little bit because every time you eat those free melees, even if you don't auto them, as soon as you eat them all, you're pushing. Yeah. So you're now forced to push versus a Nunu team. Um, so let's see what you do because if you end up crashing second wave, I think it's not so bad. I think getting ganked during second wave is very unlikely. But that should be your game plan then. So let's see. Because then you can avoid gank for the most part. Yeah, so like here, just perma auto because your away player is not so good. Good. But then now, right, yeah. you have to be careful because here we have the same thing that you ward raptors, but it doesn't 100% help you, yeah. you know? And yes, you get a good chunk, but. To be fair, this is very fake data um, HP because second wind and Doran shield. Oh. You know? Yeah. Okay. But Belvet is now going to enter bot side. You want Raptors, so now the game is once again unplayable. Because I would want to hug bot side because that's where Belvet is, right? So generally, I should always be hugging the. Yes, side I want to jungle. ward where I'm going to hug. And I want to hug where my jungle is. So you right? obviously like. I don't right want now? to stand here if Belvet is going Raptors, because then if I get ganked, I can't get to Belvet. If I'm here and Nunu is snowballing me, then I can get to Belvet. Right? So what's the proper ward here? I would do my ward, like this one. Okay. Like this. Either that or Pixel. But I need Deep Vision versus Nunu. I cannot ward like this. 
you know? Yeah. So, like, here, when you see angle to chunk, I think it's fine. I'm not saying the chunk is bad. I'm just saying you need to get ward so that you can actually play after. Because I kind of flipped it, no? Nino's here, then. Yeah, like, you do this, and then you don't ward anything. Because now, after this, you're also going to be laning. So now, when I'm going to farm this, I, I can't play the game. Yeah. And can I ward now? Let's say I ward. Can I go and ward now? No. No. Why can't I ward now? Uh, like, Nunu has timer to gank and size can follow. Well, yes, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Like, I'll lose creep, right? Yeah. I don't want to lose creep when I could ward without losing creep. That's what I'm saying. If you see a quick timer to chunk him, I think that's fine. That's, again, why people like to do this Raptor ward. Because they want to go and poke. Right? Yeah. I just think holding my ward is better. And I just do the, this exact same chunk. You just chunk him now. And then now you leave and you ward. Okay. So now I ward both sides. I can ward like this. It's fine too, just over the bush. I don't have to ward here because it's unlikely Nunu comes here this early, right? Yeah. So I, ju I just ward like somewhere like here. And then I just come back to lane. And then I stand like here. So and if you were to I can to... try this game. This game I can try to bait a 2v2 because Nunu is weaker in a fight than Lee Sin is, right? In compared to the last one. And this Silas is super chunked. The only thing that's worrying me is that Bellet is 10 HP somehow. But now this is once again just suicide. And you're just hoping that somebody else gets yeah, ganked. There it is. So now I just lose flash once again. And this does not help anyone because once again, this guy just did three camps. He did this, 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 and he just passed through mid lane, took him five seconds, and you lost flash for it. And sure, we could say, oh, but he didn't show on Raptors yet, so that means he started bot side. Okay, let's say I hug top side. Can I outrun Nunu Snowball? No. No. So I would still lose my flash. So yeah, like, this is two bots now, where you just lose flash for no reason. It doesn't help your teammates. Nunu, you're not making Nunu spend any time. Yeah. Velvet can't punish this. She can't go enemy Raptors here. Nunu legit spent 5 seconds mid for you to lose flash. Yep. Okay, he fucked up. I think if you trust yourself, you can WQ, no? Like... Here, when he eat you, don't you think it's better? WQ forward. Yeah, what will he do? Let me watch it again. Want to just have to flash immediately? He just walked towards top by W forward. I don't know. But he will want to die before he leaves Q range. Look. Mm. WQ. Uh. Like, it's not bad what happened either, yeah, right? I think it would have been I'm close. just saying, like... Yeah, it could have been an angle. Like, I feel like if you WQ here, you know? Yeah. What what does he do? I, I, was, I think I just wanted to hold, hold W for the chase, because I knew I win that if he flashes away. Yeah, that's fine, too. I'm just saying he can't do anything. Yeah. But I, I think this outcome is completely fine, too. It's already really good. Like here, assuming Nunu is top side, is fine. See, now we just saw him. Yeah. I would ping for help here. Like Velvet is looking bot, but this guy has no flash. But it's too late now. He's gonna crash this in base, but Warwick is the goat. Warwick is so fucking broken. Just trim wave and base. 
spamming this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just space now. Good. Nice. So, right now, right? Again. Now, I am no flash. And I have Nunu Silas, and my wave is fucking nice. So now my goal should be, unless I know I can't get ganked, because let's say, for example, I know Nunu is dead or whatever the fuck, right? My goal is just to have, keep the wave here. Um, as long as wave is inside of this, I can play, right? To me, it looks like it's slow pushing, no? Yeah, but if it is pushing into enemy, I still want to keep it here for as long as possible until I'm forced to crash. The bigger the wave, the harder for them to gank me, the harder for them to all in me, the harder it is for Sals to win, right? Yeah. And right now, this should get full targeted by this, so it should be pushing to you. Like, this will just die, and then this will just get one shot. You know? Yeah. But in an alternate universe, where, let's say, there's like two melees here and this doesn't die, then yes, the next wave gets here before the other one from enemy. And then yes, it'll push into the enemy, but even in that case... You would want to slow push unless you can crash before Salas comes. Like this guy's TP, no? Yeah. So if he has TP, starting to push this when you come back is maybe not so good because if he just TPs back and then just freeze on you because you have no spells, then you're fucked, no? Yeah. So I think here just only last it. You have a fucking free win. You have a winning top. Your Belvet got to full clear and the game is human. So if you if you either way right now, I close the world. <laughs> and ironically. See it? The wave's doing exactly what I said. Yeah. Your cannon's getting fucking one shot. This is so fucking nice. The game is so free win right now. So now, what can we expect Nunu to do? Where is this next gank? Um <sighs> Um, probably camp into bot. Yeah, it should be bot. He doesn't have to do a camp, it's fucking Nunu. Yeah, right? If he but wants to, but... He, he can easily gank bot. This wave will end up here if these guys are human, right? So on this wave, Nunu will gank bot. Yeah. So then you have to ask yourself, is it worth for me to ruin my whole lane right now to help bot lane? Because can I help bot lane? No, I cannot help bot lane. Velvet will go to here. She will never help. So it'll be 3v3. And these guys are 10 HP. So why would I break my mid lane freeze to help bot lane? But it is really good that you're looking bot. It's really, really good you're looking bot. Because there will be games in the future where because you look bot lane here, you can now actually break your freeze and help bot lane. So just hold wave and ping bot right now? I mean, there's nothing to ping. They need Jesus. <laughs> they fucked up their lane. Like, uh, the, the wave will be here and Ezreal will have to farm and he'll just fucking die. They should just take the L and just recall. Mm. But pinging them doesn't do anything because if they play safe, they're fucked anyways, you know? Yeah. The whole point is just just look bot and ask yourself if you can help. You can't help because Nunu will be bot and Bellwood will not. If your bot lane had a bit better condition, then maybe you guys can free be free. But mainly it's about Bellet. If Bellet is going bot and you think it'll be a free free, you can one shot mid wave and try to connect yourself to the free free to make it a four free, you know? Yeah. It's troll now? Yeah, yeah, yep. It is a bit troll. It's good for Stardust, but terrible for you. Because now if Nunu doesn't show bot, it will get hard for you to play next wave. And if you look at your Stardust, you will see why I think this is so bad to do. Because you have 19 Stardust right now, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so please tell me, if you are Silas, right now, Silas was his cannon, agree? Yeah. Okay. Silas is a melee champion. He just used E and Q to farm this. Yeah. If he wants to walk up and farm this here, will you not get to Stardust him to death? Right. Okay, so why? Look at the starters you got. You got three starters from doing this. Now you made it so you will in the future get ganked. 
and you also made it so he doesn't have to give you Stardust. Right? Yeah. So you get less Stardust doing what you're doing. Yep. And you're making your game painful. Yep. I swear to God, this is not how we should play as well. I swear, right now, if you just freeze and you E when he goes in the wave and you full combo him, you will get like 10 Stardust, no? Yeah. So just hold the freeze. It is worth for you to lose free Stardust if he never farms a single creep. Because right now he E that queued. So he will lose this melee and these casters if he doesn't walk up and farm. And that is just better. Yeah. And you can stand on the side of this wave eventually and try to tap and queue him a bit. Like just try to get some Cooper rocks and get some Stardust that way. And then also, once the cannon is going to die, then you can also E and you can E in a way where you maybe you don't break the freeze, for example, too. Yeah. Look, you can't punish him now. And now, here, Nunu shows an award, right? Yeah. But he is not forced to. This award has nothing to do with you. Right? Your team is just goated, right? Yeah. So in the future, what will happen here? This guy fights you once here to stop the wave from crashing. Wave is here and now you're a flashless asshole. You got like two or something more Stardust and you're now flashless asshole and wave is here. And then once again, what should then happen is that even though, yes, you got two more Stardust earlier because of this, you're gonna get two, minus two Stardust later because of Wave being fucked up. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And I'm not saying to freeze for the whole game. I, I, I said I was more than fine with you slamming E on the fucking Wave once he actually like walks up. If you can get a huge fucking chunk on him, by all means, break your fucking freeze, right? Yeah. If he walks up to this wave, and he starts altering these fucking creeps, by all means, fucking E and Q him and ruin your whole wave. Because he's gonna lose, like, this HP, and you're gonna get a lot of starters doing that, and you're gonna get to crash. Yeah. But he can't farm a single creep right now. He's losing this caster, and he's gonna lose this caster, and he's gonna lose melees, but the only reason why he doesn't lose all of it is because you're ruining your wave. So here, as long as we hug both sides of the lane, Nunu cannot do anything. Nunu is forced to puff up to top right now. Good. Boom. Why do I just lose that? I mean, you got double queued, no? It's Q Max Silas. I just you have to dodge you. his second part Q. So I have to start queuing after he casts Q? Yeah, or W Q. You know? Yeah. Like, his Q is one shotting you. Watch this. Here's first part. Now it looks second part. Ready? <laughs> and then W. Boom. Yeah. But I think what you did is fine. Just you have to use W and Q, I think. You just hate W queuing. But you were probably in the same mindset that you wanted to Q and then W after, right? Yeah. To chase. Yeah. But I think you can wait for his Q, like you said, and then dodge that. But I also think here you're just scared for no reason. Yeah, should he's forward just here? dead. Yes. Can you, you don't think he's dead? Um, can you not hover? Well, yeah, he can. But 1v1-wise, you don't lose this. You tell me, why did I lose this? You don't lose this. You only lose because Nunu. Yeah. He is solo killed. If you just double and him, he's just solo killed. I, right? I think I disagree. I don't think he dies here. If I w he has no biscuits. He has 60 mana. What does he do? He can... 
right click towards the tower. I mean, it okay, look, the W line I take. Look, I agree with Nuna part. You are a psychopath to W forward because of Nuna. I don't agree Silas wise. I don't think he can lane after this. So here, you W forward. Where do you want him to go? Uh, I mean, I would W towards like an, like an, an angle. Like that way, yeah. Yes, I would press W like this way. And you want him to go here? Yeah. Okay. Is this not his HP? I guess I'm just afraid of Nino hovering topside. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I completely agree with Nunu. I'm just saying, your champion and its damage, Salus should be around this HP if you double your Q and he immediately clicks to the side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then after that, if Salus is this HP and this mana, and then look your wave, wave will be here. He can't play, right? Yeah. So you didn't lose this. You only lost because you're not committing with W because you're scared of Nunu, which is fine. That's completely fine to be scared of Nunu. But if I'm scared of Nunu, I could still W like this using my vision and velvet, could I not? Yeah. So that is why I'm saying that, yeah, you're right, Nunu can be here, but you are completely wrong that you lose this 1v1 because you do not lose this 1v1. You are just scared of Nunu and you are panic Wing because you're just confused because you took a lot of damage. Yeah. Because if you're purely thinking... If you're actually thinking in this moment that I win, but I lose because of Nunu, then you would W towards Belvet. Look your vision. Yeah. That's why I don't believe what you're saying, because it's, it's always like this with coaching and reviewing. Like, you can watch the VOD and then say you're scared of something, but in the moment when you're playing, you're scared of something else. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised... If you unironically W it away, because you were like, what the fuck, I just took a lot of damage. <laughs> nah, I think that was it. Because if you actually thought about Nunu, I really feel like you could have W'd like this, and then he still gets chunked. I agree, he doesn't die, but when I say he dies, to me this is dying. If he's this HP, this mana, and his wave is here, and he's no TP, he is dead. Because he has no decisions that are good, yeah. you know what I mean? And if Nunu ganks from here, which is his only gank route because of my vision, I have a Belvet with full HP. And Nunu is not level 6. He's level 4 slash 5. So, so if I that's w what I think. Q towards bot side right now and chunk him, what do I do with the wave? Freeze it and back or what? Yeah, you just freeze. You freeze for a while and then if he never shows up, you recall. If Nunu shows top, for example, then you especially you want to recall. If Nunu never shows, you can start to push, for example, the wave, or just even trim it, you know? Because you don't want Nunu to come and snowball it and one-shot it as you're in base, you know? Yeah. Then you lose a lot. So then you can just leave it in the middle, and it'll still be okay, you know? Yeah. But playing aggressive here can lead to a lot of good outcomes, because it can make Nunu try to gank. If you make Nunu gank here instead of top, that's very good, right? And it is good because of Belvet. That's why I'm saying that your mindset, it comes from an idea, and that idea is good sometimes. The idea that you take pressure to mid, to release pressure from your teammates, that's good in this case. If Nuni ganks me mid here, it's good because I can use my Velvet. See? Yeah. Warwick benefits from it. We know Nunu should be topside. And this is how the game works. So now that you know that, now we can realize, okay, this is how the game works. Okay, how can I see that in game? Because it's it sounds hard, but it is in reality very simple. You tell yourself right now, Nunu should pop the top. You should always have an idea how strong your teammates are, right? So you should be aware right now that Belvet isn't like useless. She's come from base. She's gotten her item. You can realize Sals is low mana too. You know right now, Wave will be here. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. So here you can tell yourself, before you fight him even, you can say here, I can fight Silas to the death. Nunu can't gank me. 
you can also assume Nunu is on wolves. Because Nunu did Gromp and now went here, right? Yeah. And then if I want to bait the 2v2, I can also ping for help, right? I can ping assist me, assist me, and all and on my way, right? Yeah. And see how your Belvet responds. If she pings on my way as well, then you know even more you can bait this. Yeah? Yeah. So now, since we are in a different mindset, we are doubling forward. Yeah. And then now, we pull the wave here, and we see how does he respond. I start to walk up here, see if I can maybe find him or something, right? Yeah. And then I ask myself, can I base with the wave here pushing into me, or will somebody come and crash it? If nobody can come and crash it, I always recall like that. If somebody can come and crash it, then I either base with wave in middle, or I try to Omega Greed, which is kill this and the next wave. But usually we would base it with wave in middle. Imagine he does this, and you did the WQ before. Yeah. He's fucked up now. My support's hovering in my jungle too. Yeah, well, I just don't think he would do this in the first place, if he was that low. He would just be crazy. And also, people don't track cool, uh, cooldowns properly. So right now, if you act like you have the W, he would 100% click back. Yeah. So here, your mindset just has to be, okay, he is bot, can I do my own play or can I help my bot lane? Show. Like for example, I can push and go top lane, or I can push and now let my bot lane recall, like Rakan is really low from this gank for example. So if I one shot this wave, I can help my bot lane. By playing slow, I'm not really doing anything. Right, like here is a timer where I would one shot the wave. I don't agree with how you play here, because I think your bot lane greatly benefits if you fix their lane. And the only thing that should stop you from fixing lane is the fact that Belvet is going top and Nunu is missing. But let's say you know Nunu is top, for example. Then it's 3v2 if you go bot. You can simply just threaten gank bot here to allow your team to recall. Yeah. This ward is completely useless, like I said before, right? It doesn't... I don't gain anything from this ward. I should never it doesn't help me in any way, right? I should never go for it. Um, yeah. In lane. Like if I want to ward there, it should be pink. It should not be trinkets. So here, for example, Darius gets to one one Warwick, which, in my opinion, is your fault. Obviously, it's not your fault Warwick dies, but the fact Warwick is not allowed to fight here is your fault. So I should be enemy saving. jungle is dead. Nunu is dead, and enemy mid is bot. And you have a Warwick with ulti available to fight, and you look bot lane, which is good. I'm honestly like your awareness is really good for the most part, but then you don't check top lane. I need to check top lane here. Because I need to know do I one shot this wave and run top? Do I one shot this wave and run bot? Because I have a very good timer. It doesn't matter if you don't have ult, bro. If you go top and that allows Warwick to crash the wave, that's already good. If you go top, let's say Warwick is freezing. If you go top and you standing here means that Darius can't farm the whole wave, then that's already good, is it not? Yeah. Because you slow pushing this doesn't do anything to Salus, really. If you one shot the wave, you would deny the same amount of creeps, but you would get a roam timer. And this also now leaves you gankable once again. Whereas if you one shot the wave, very often it would either be in middle or bounce into you. So now, since you pushed it so slowly, you can't actually roam, because now Silas can 1, threaten freeze, 2, if you actually commit the roam, you will lose the next wave. But if you one-shot the wave, watch. So here, you just start altering, right? I think I and wanted to shove, altering. but I wanted all the stacks. Yes, but we thing. should, I, I understand, but you get 1 or 2 more Stardust here, yes? But getting one to two more Stardust for Darius to farm a wave and you to lose a roam window is just not good. So just EQ right now? Yeah. Even if Cannon just doesn't e die? 
Yeah, just EQ and one shot away, or you could Q and prep the cannon. You can't say that you want to... I understand you want to eat the cannon, and I agree with that. But you can prep the creeps. You can Q the cannon right now. Yeah. Agree? Yeah. But you are not doing it. Because you're not in a mindset that I need to go to top, I need to go to bot. Yeah. That's my whole point, is that you have to have an idea here that I can roam to top. I can roam somewhere. And if you are in that idea, then yes, you can set up the creeps. Yep. You can stand here and start pushing and queuing this. And you would be doing it if you were in the mindset, I need to get to top ASAP. I don't even know what the wave state is top. I think Warwick is slow pushing. Yes, he's slow pushing into Darius. So literally, if you hover to top, it means Darius can't all in Warwick. And Warwick gets to crash. And if Warwick gets to crash, he can help you back after. The same roam Warwick did level 3, he can do again now. If you allow this Warwick to crash, he can gank mid. You can even ping him to gank mid. Sure, we can say, oh, it's solo queue, people don't do that. That's just not even true. But, you know. Yeah. Like, people do um, what you want all the time. Like, I'm gonna show you a an example. Okay. Here's literally yesterday. So I tell Poppy to ward my lane bush for me, level 1. Because I am versus Riven with Ignite, and they tend to stand in that bush and cheese. My entire team comes, and Poppy wards the bush for me. See that? Yeah. I have done so many, like, huge team-coordinated plays in solo queue. It happens all the time. It is not... Uh, some LCS level gameplay that Warwick crashes this wave and runs to mid. So yeah. So generally, you, you you agree with the statement that you have to trust your teammates if you want to win games. Well, I don't ru I don't ruin my game for my teammates, but I trust them to function in basic ways. If I ping Warwick to gank mid when he has a good timer to do it, I believe that he might do it. I'm not going to ruin my lane by trusting him but i will ping him to come mid and i will see how he reacts if he pings as well on my way and he starts to move then yes i'm trusting that he's roaming mid of course because he's pinging he's coming mid and i see on my minimap he's coming mid right yeah but i'm not going to play my lane in a way where i expect my top laner to gank you understand what i mean I'm not roaming top here because I think Warwick will go mid. I'm roaming top because I don't want Warwick to not be able to fight Darius on the bounce. To me, it's obvious Darius will want to try to fight Warwick here because if he doesn't fight Warwick now, he can never fight Warwick. Yep. If Warwick has to crash his wave, Warwick can fucking recall and buy items. He can do whatever he wants. So most of the time, there will be a top lane fight right now. I would want Herald here, like right now, when Darius is basing, right? Darius is basing right now, they're hovering into Drake, and you have Rakan on Rome timer. This is super good Herald timer. So I would one-shot this wave and go Herald. Otherwise your Rakan's timer is wasted. Like this E is just bad. Right, the way you're playing is just bad. You're yeah. playing for trades, you're available to shoot top, you lost your fucking flash. So just leave just... the lave there and walk? No, you just E and stand topside. Why are you standing and fighting? Look look how you're playing. You know they're on dragon? Watch what you do. Look okay. here you're smurfing. Right here you're smurfing. But I should be Eing the wave, autoing, queuing, setting it up, and then Eing, right? And kiting to topside. But look what you do. You get baited to fight him and you run into them. What are you doing? Yeah. You are locked camera tunneling and fighting him. This gank never works if you are here and you move your camera down because you're expecting Nuna gank. Yeah. We're just not playing the real game. The game is Herald here. Enemy top is dead. Yeah. The game is not fighting Silas here. It doesn't matter if it's solo queue or if it's LCS or whatever, it's League of Legends. 
yeah. you don't fight mid here when enemy has a timer to gank you enemy support could be mid now too you don't fight mid on bottom side of the lane when your team is doing this on top side you ask yourself how can i help this top play if i can't help this top play right because let's say in a different game i can't push or whatever then i try to just not int the game which i did right like here you're just fucking fighting for fun and you're just fucking up the game like this is just bad i just lose my flash you're not helping anyone nobody's happy you're fighting here you know yeah it's not worth for you to make him ulti and then you lose flash here it's not needed we have four people top their darius is dead the only way they can go herald here is if both their bot lanes move you know yeah which we will see because of your ward Because Nuno dying here has nothing to do with you. He would die as soon as they entered his topside jungle. If he went to Raptors and Belvet is there, he would die the same way. And especially with Belvet, you getting Herald there is massive. It should be winnable. Yeah. Nice. Boom. It's good to see at least. You were cocky enough to do it. <laughs> you dying here is acceptable. Okay. Because, like, yes, it is the same thing as before that Nunu can always gank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But 1v1 wise, this is good. Agree? Yeah. Like, it's good to know what you can do 1v1 because. You literally didn't know, as I saw one trick earlier, that you could do the same thing. Like, obviously it's bad, because Nunu can fucking gank you, right? Yeah. But there will be cases where Nunu can't gank me, and then me knowing I win is good. So, obviously, if we respect Nunu, if you look at the game here, you can simply just tell yourself, this guy is fucked, and as long as he doesn't base, it's fine. And Bellos is farming right now, so just chill a little bit. Right? Look here, it's fine. You can just walk up. You know this guy's not facing because you do this. Good. Just right click back. Right. This guy's fucked now. Right? Yeah. He, he's fucked. And then now you could tell yourself, this guy is only doing this if he's fucking bad, right? And this is the hard part about League. Honestly, like, yes, this is fucking... Like, Master Tier, D1, D2. So, yeah, this guy could just be that fucking bad. That yeah. he just thinks he wins this. But yeah. my logic is that if they are that fucking bad, then I will win by default. To me, Silas, that misses E, will never fight you unless somebody's here, right? Yeah. Why would this guy now try to fight me when he is, first of all, half HP, second of all, basically Um, and lost his E? Yeah. Something has to be wrong. So, oh, my bad. Just an so that that that's something you could tell yourself. And yes, I understand. Krill and um, people are fucking bad. So I am sure there has been cases like that where the guy is actually just that bad, and you lose out on a solo kill because you play safe. Sure, but I think if you make a compilation of these examples, I think probably seventy percent of the time you get punished for this. Don't you think so? Yep. Like, because you're in, like, Master D1, D2 now. You're not in Silver. In Silver, I think, yeah, sure. This guy is just always going to int. But at this point, I think, this is good. You're smurfing right now. You have to just cancel his base. This is good. Now you win no matter what you do. Because now he can't base. So as long as you don't int right now, then you win. Yeah. And you also had to realize that it's a breathing window in the game. What I mean by that is, Ezreal had to base, so there is no way Nunu will be bot or anything like that either. And yeah. Warwick is also in base. So we can't apply the logic that I'm releasing pressure from my teammates. Like again, if Warwick is fucking here proxy farming, right? Yeah. Then sure, you playing like this would make more sense. Because maybe Nunu should gank top, right? But Nunu literally cannot do anything right now. 
but you just never tell yourself this, and that's hurting you a lot. Yeah. And sometimes I think playing the way you are right now can be very good, because some games this is what's needed to win. If your team is like hard losing, like hard losing, like hard hard losing, because your champion scales, right? So you can usually just play safe, but if your team is hard losing, I can understand being desperate and try to come back. But to me, this game is the freest win ever. Because I am just free scaling my lane, and I have had so many windows to roam, and I have a winning jungle and a top laner that is 1v2 in enemy jungle and top as we speak. Yeah. Right? Isn't this a fucking free win? So I don't need to int. I just need to connect myself to the place. See, now you push once again, so you can do once again whatever you want. So I don't need to int. Oh my god, the skies descend. Here we fucking go! Okay, really good ult. I'm just doing nothing here. Yeah, unlucky. See, Warwick, he's goated, look at him! <laughs> So right now, we are in mid-game and we're really, really strong. So we, again, we have to understand, okay, I'm really strong. My team is really strong. I want to use it. So how can I use it? Because enemy also knows you guys are really strong. Yeah, this is the part so, that I struggle with a lot. Of like where to be on the map when it comes to like this time. Right. So to me right now, Harold is up in one fucking minute and I want to fight that. It doesn't matter that I'm ace all unsure I want to scale. I am very strong right now, and so is my team. So I want to fight Harold as long as Belvet is okay with it. And Belvet is recon right now and has three top camps up. So no matter what, I will make sure I'm topside. Whether that's mid or top, I don't care. But I have to make sure I am ready to fight this Harold. That is what I'm thinking right now. Yeah. I am assuming Belvet will go top camps. Yes, there she is. So, right now, Salus goes bot. And this can now become a problem, because if Salus now pushes this wave, and then I go here now after this, will I be at Herald spawn? No. Exactly. So, if this bot wave ends up here, and we end up losing this wave, right? I lose this wave to the turret, if I commit to Herald, yeah? Yeah. Should I care? No, absolutely not. Yeah, I shouldn't give a fuck. That's the mindset we have to be in. Because the same wave you are going to lose here, you can gain top right now. Yeah. You will gain this wave times two by getting this Herald. And that's just from the Herald gold itself. It's very likely it's a team fight, right? Yeah. Which is also gold. Very likely you'll get a turret or even two with that herald later, which is also gold. I think so I we don't go we don't go to bot side here. We have to help Rakan set up wards here. We have to take top wave. We have to do something. You can't just leave mid um, here. I'm griefing. Yeah. You're griefing the game. Yep. If somebody wants to go bot, it should be the fucking useless Ezreal. I'm fine with Ezreal going bot. Because he's fucking useless. But now you fucked up the game for your team. Yep. I understand, yes, it's a lot of farm here. Just take Estriel's midwave. Force him to go bot lane. He's useless. Yes, Rakan is fighting. That's not your fault. But what I'm saying is, if Rakan doesn't fight here, and enemy team goes here, your team has to fight for control, but then they are fighting 4v5, yeah? Yeah. Making your team fight 4v5 is just fucking bad. I'm strong too. Yes. If you have TP up, then what you're doing now makes more sense, but you don't have TP up. Yeah. So now Harold spawns, and you're lucky that enemy team is not there. Nunu is farming fucking blue buff. But if Nunu is a fucking human, and he sees that you go bot here, which everybody can see on a minimap right now, and they just go to fucking Harold, they will be five people at Harold, and you, your team will be four, plus 
the fourth guy that will be there is Ezreal, who is fucking useless. Yeah. So, if we go back, ideally, the solution to this is that, if you look now, here, um, Ezreal pushes out bot lane. Like, actually push out. See, because when he leaves the wave like this, we're not actually pushing it out. But maybe he can't, because he'll die to Nunu. But basically, when this happened, we decided to give this wave. You know? Yeah. So, I just think it's fine. I think you literally just go top here, you take the fucking top wave. You know? Yeah. And we just have to make a decision to start fucking Herald and start a fucking banger teamfight. You will win. It's not even funny. Look at Tab. Let's see. Look, enemy jungle. Look, your jungle. Yeah, capped. Yeah, it's completely free win this game. Okay, Does it this change if uh, Silas is like Trinimir this game? Well, if Belvet is this fed, not really. But obviously, champions change, right? Yeah. Like, some champions will be stronger at the Herald fight. Sometimes conditions will be worse. Like, if you guys don't have vision and they have fiddlesticks. Then probably I would just go bot, you know? Yeah. So the only thing that sucks about this is that Warwick is chunked and Rakan has no fucking spells because yeah. he wasted them before. I could lose this. You have to kill Darius, you are griefing your team. You don't want to win. Yeah, you you hate winning. Darius, if he is alive, he will kill everyone. You have to kill Darius. It doesn't matter if Nunu makes it alive. The only thing, once again, the only thing that matters here is to get a winning fight or get Herald. So like here, kill Darius. Yeah. What are you doing? Look, you have Flash and W up, yeah? Yep. Don't, don't space the Darius. If he wants to try to kill you, that's good. So here, you run away from Nunu ulti, which makes sense. Why are you not killing Darius? Yeah. Right? It's the only thing that matters. So maybe in hindsight, that's easier to realize. Maybe we couldn't kill him anyways, right? But yeah. generally speaking, when you enter a Herald fight, you should know and just any team fight who... Who do I ideally have to kill, right? This Darius is the only human on their team and also is a type of champion that if you leave him untouched, he will just kill everything, right? Is that even a fight we should have been taking, though? Well, I think when Rakan inted and Warwick inted, yeah, we shouldn't. Like, when you look here, when Rakan ults and loses everything, here, that's start of the bad part, here, yeah. when Rakan loses every spell, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then now, Warwick gets chunked, but this is your fault, because this is a byproduct of this. You're walking bot. Yes, your team can't control the area for Herald. Everybody in the game wants to fight the Herald, and we should fight the Herald, but we can't set up vision, we can't control, we can't go for picks, because you are bots. Mm -hmm. And also, by the way, thing about these side waves, if Silas isn't bottling to crash it, this wave is good. Do you see that? Yeah, because you can freeze it later on. Yes. This this wave won't crash. Like the next wave will just come and just stop it. Yep. So this wave is only gonna be bad if Silas is still bot. And if Silas is still bot, you just fucking kill these two griefers, right? Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, obviously now now yes, the fight gets worse. Because now Warwick has wasted ulti and so has Rakan, and Ezreal is dead. So yeah, if you're really smurfing, you can see ahead of time right now and see this fight will be bad because we don't have any lockup uh, for the Darius now. Just ping off. Yeah, then we could spam ping away. But, but then we always need to understand why did he go bad in the first place. And in this case, I wasn't there to do my job to keep the control. Yeah. And sure, of course, Warwick should not have fought when you were bot. Rakan should not have fought when you were bot. I completely agree. It's just if your teammates don't fight, enemy team gets mid push, and now we have to face check enemy team on Herald, which is still worse. Yeah. And that's what you want to try to prevent.
That's why I'm saying we can't go for that bot wave. Unless we have TP, then we can TP back immediately and then maybe we can help. But yeah. Yeah, now, I mean, now the game gets a bit cringe and the game exploded and we haven't gotten to farm in a while, so... I mean, this is my just my fault, yeah. I mean, it's of course their fault too. They could play better, but I can't control that. My actions made it hard for my teammates to play and do what they wanted. Like, it's important to hold self accountable but it's also important to understand what is grief from my teammates and what isn't because if i always put myself down i can't improve either because it's good to understand your teammates are inting because yeah. that's a skill in itself right if i can recognize what is bad for my team i know to not get baited by them right yeah i mean right now you're doing montage I mean, we still lose this game, but I'm in a position to carry. Yeah, but well, the thing is, like, now you have items, which is nice. The thing is just the game is just cringe. Like, they have three drakes, and they got the objectives, and you're, like, you're all in your base. Like, just look at your minimap. There's so much turrets to break before you can win, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Like, yes, you have a lot of gold now, because enemy team inted. But you could have had this gold... And also probably taking like free turrets, and then the game is so much cleaner and nicer to play, right? Yeah. So at this point now you have to ask yourself, okay, how, how can we use this Baron? Can we siege? How what what's enemy team's wave clear? If they have a lot of wave clear, how is our dive? How is our engage? We only really have Rakan as like real engage, right? Yeah. So usually in these type of games, you're gonna have to play like two two lanes. Because this guy relying on this is not going to work, usually. So we're going to usually use side push to get mid turret. But we can't just go side here. Because if you go side right now, if they just go side, they just kill you. Yeah. You know? So right here, when you have no vision, you open the map for mid. It's fine. But you should want to eventually get vision on like a side. Right? So maybe we get a ward here with Rakan. Maybe we get a ward over here. Then we can start pushing bot, going mid. A guy catches this wave and then you can go dive mid, for example. You have to find a way to break this and this. That should be your goal. You know? Yeah. And you said to do that, at least in this scenario, to, would be to like shove mid? and. Yeah, we have mid. to shove mid. If they int, we go on them, like this. If they don't int... We use mid push to set a vision so we can push bot. If we can break this turret, for example, we can take deeper waves, right? Yeah. If we take deeper waves, I can stay mid for longer. They have to send somebody here to defend. When they send somebody here to defend, it allows you to dive the people defending this. So if this guy stands like this, defending tier one turret, when you're coming from this flank and they have a guy bot, that's a free kill on mid, right? Yeah. Because it's just important to understand what is like. This is not a real play. Breaking mid tier 1 shouldn't be this easy. Like, Warriors should not walk up and int. So, I just need you to learn what do I do if he doesn't int? Because what you're doing here is correct because he's inting. Here, Silas is bot, and this guy walks up like this. You are doing really good at punishing his mistake. But if he plays it safe and stands on the turret, you have to ask yourself are we in a position to dive? If yes, then just fucking dive. If no, then you use mid prio to set up strong side vision on bot side, right? You moving in here allows Rakan to come with you. Then you can push out bot, take this turret, get on the flank, and then you can break mid like that, you know? Yeah. Some games, you don't have to do all of this because you have a fucking Malphite top instead of Warwick. You have a fucking Kai's instead of Esther, and we can just fucking send five people dive straight away, right? But as you get higher and higher elo, Varus will not walk up here, and then the game gets slower, and you have to find a different way to break the game open. Now we can just fucking stay mid. Nice, now we got the mid tier one. 
So now we can use mid push to go into Belwet. Yeah, or, or we can stay for fun. Drake is spawning, so us setting up base makes sense. But if Drake is not spawning, you should not be going mid here. Look where next mid wave is, it hasn't even spawned. You want to force the fist fight. Look here. You one shot the mid wave, you're smurfing right now. Now you should try your hardest to force a fight. They play deep jungle you, right now. You should ping Ezreal to come, we should go in their jungle, clear their fucking wards. We should find a way to start a fight, because Vars is dead. Yep. The only thing that should make us not want to fight is that Drake is spawning, so we should hold our resources. I agree with that. But that is not what you're thinking, because you're just hovering mid when there's no fucking mid wave. Right? We don't need to be mid until, like, now. Now it makes sense to start going mid. But you are just fucking standing in mid bush. Right? So now you have to think, okay, what's my job in this teamfight? How am I going to play it? Who is my ideal target? Right? Obviously you're going to look for like a good R, but maybe you should... Uh, maybe you should... Like this is really good what you're saying. But maybe you should hold your ulti until Rakan lands his combo and then you can chain it, right? Stuff like that. Yeah. You want to make sure you think about that. Think about like how does enemy want to fight. When they give you mid wave like this, maybe you don't even need to go to dragon. Obviously in this game, it's soul, so you need to. But sometimes here, when enemy is all grouped here and That's setting up shocking. control, if you don't feel like you can enter, then you can just run it down mid. Yeah. Spamping your team to go mid and you just end the game. Yeah. Let's say they get second or third Drake, and you get this, 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 and you avoided a potential losing team fight. That's good. Obviously here, we should fight, because soul. I think you're gonna have to allow your team to walk in. Yeah, you have to threaten more. I don't know why you play so safe here. There Since is a uh, Silas on mid. Yeah. I think you should spam ping to just go. Because if they go on your team, you get pentakill with fire, no? Like, aren't they trolling? You have stopwatch, flash. And W. Look where you are. Yeah. Like, the, like the thing is, you want to make sure that when Rakan sees an angle to fucking flash and bang around all of them, that he uh -huh. goes for it, right? But from my perspective, if I'm Rakan here and I see my ace is here, do you feel like you're giving him confidence? No. So you have to posture more aggressively and you might even have to just send it because you have flash and stopwatch. Like, Silas is on the midwave. The whole reason... Why we go for mid prio is to force somebody to go mid. And then when they send a guy mid, you have numbers, yeah? Yeah. So I don't understand why are you so afraid to send it and engage here when Salus is stuck on midwave. They also have poke Varus, right? Yeah. So if you just keep waiting, Ezreal will get shot once more here. He's 10 HP, by the way. Like, don't you feel like you're just... Too scared? Yeah. You can W over the wall and Rakan can E on you, by the way. You're literally AFK. You haven't joined the game until now. Yeah. So, like, the problem with this is now Salus is here. And your teammates lost your DPS for so long. Like, I would understand, if you don't have stopwatch, you don't have flash, right? Then I, I can agree. But I really think here, if you just fucking send it, what can they do? Going on you is not legal. Do you think they can go on you? Um, In my head, if they go on you, yeah. you just stopwatch or flash, you press R, yeah. you have a fucking Rakan, combo all of them, no? Your, sh your champ doesn't function playing like this, because <clears throat> if you're like Seraph right now, right? Then yeah, you're hitting them right now. But you are completely useless. You have not done a single bit of damage until now. And am I useful? Like, hitting Nunu is not really useful, no? Yeah. And I'm only hitting Nunu because I didn't go in.
So yeah, the, those windows is really important to get um, like good at. Um, that's why I was saying in the OPGG thing that a lot of the time I do see stuff like this that people do get really fed, but then they're just useless. As example, you're just not doing anything. <clears throat> so, and I understand maybe you're scared. I understand as well that if you did what I said, maybe you completely fucking misplay it and you fucking int the game away and you die. Okay, but if we are that bad that we're gonna misplay every fight I do, I won't get Challenger, which was your goal anyways, right? So yeah, learning those angles, yeah, it might solo lose you games. But it will be necessary to learn that to win games. Okay, good Sonyas. Like this fight, it literally happened. They all tunneled on you, you know? Yeah. And it was a lot better. Sucks that Darius will still get Pentakill. Because he's just fucking OP. So. Yeah, but if, we, but, if I played better last fight, he wouldn't be this strong. Yeah. But also, like, this was. This was you getting Vars ulted and stuff without having Flash to react and no big ult. In the example I was saying. You were coming from Fog of War with Flash Up, you know, and Big Ult. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, game is just over now, though. So. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of things, but that's why I recorded it for you, so you can rewatch it. Yeah. And so, what I want you to do next is just write down everything that you remember we talked about, and then play games, and um, rewatch everything, and then write down everything again, you know? Just set some <clears throat> goals in mind to work on. Like, I think big part is, like, the mindset and, like, allowing yourself to get strong and then using your strength. Yeah. Because you're not using your strength. You get to the point where you're really strong and you have push and you're just doing nothing, right? And then in fights, you have fucking free items and flash up and everything, and then you don't look for angles, you don't take your best fights. It's a 5v4 and you're AFK. So yeah. Okay. Just message me if you have any questions after watching it, okay? Yep. Thank you so much. Alright. Good luck in your game. Thank you. Bye.